So let's talk about affordable housing in Hawaii. I'm not talking about the need of affordable housing because clearly there's demand for it. I'm not talking about how we're gonna build these or even what affordable actually means. Instead, I wanna ask, should affordable housing in Hawaii remain affordable? And I think this is an important discussion to have because it seems like our monopoly board here in Hawaii is getting smaller and smaller each year. And sure, the state has found ways to add a few more squares and blocks here or there on the board, but a lot of the units that are originally being sold for cheap, like the Baltic Avenues and those light blue ones at the bottom of the board, they seem to be reselling for prices that are like the green ones or even Boardwalk or Park Place. Now there were some recent news articles that talked about the affordability of these affordable units after their initial sale and why they don't seem to be affordable for very long. And I'm primarily talking about housing units in the Kaka'ako or Honolulu area. For each of these projects, a certain percentage of the units or square footage has to go towards affordable or reserved housing. And those are reserved for households who earn a certain amount of income. And usually that's around the 140% of the area median income, which I will put on the screen here. And that's to ensure that there aren't any high earners buying these affordable units. And what that means for the project is that the market rate units in that project go on to subsidize basically the affordables. And the project overall benefits from government subsidies, height variances and density bonuses and other infrastructure costs. But it seems like once these affordable housing units are sold, they're never really affordable again. Because of how high and quickly home values here in Hawaii seem to just keep going up and up, these affordable units are not affordable. I mean, even for new projects, when people initially purchase them in two to three years when they're ultimately built, the value of that property has gone up pretty significantly. And what that means is a one bedroom that sells for $350,000 is now no longer affordable when it's resold for $650,000. But surely there's gotta be some sort of protection, right? Against people just flipping these units. And there are some, you have shared appreciation and you also have first buyback from certain government agencies that are able to buy these units back for a certain price and resell them to families who qualify or who would have qualified for that 140% AMI income limit. But the problem is that the government agencies that can buy these units back really don't. HCDA has never bought back a unit and HHFDC has only bought back five or six. Meanwhile, there are dozens and dozens of these units that'll just be sold off in the regular market. And sure, there is shared appreciation. So the state does get some of that money back, but it doesn't make it any more affordable. It just kind of incentivizes people to sell their affordable units for more, knowing that they're gonna have to split some of that appreciation with the state. And so in light of this, I ask again, should affordable housing units in Hawaii stay affordable? Because I think as a state, it doesn't seem like we're committed to that. And that's okay. If that's the state's perception and purview, then at least it's good to know moving forward. But we should recognize that once these units are sold as affordable, they really don't remain affordable for very long. I do wonder about the long-term effects that that will have because while we're adding inventory, we're not adding long-term affordable inventory. And I don't mean to skirt any personal responsibility here because I'm a part of this. When I initially bought my unit here in downtown Honolulu, it was considered affordable or reserved, and it helped me to be able to buy a place. But I recognize that when it's time for us to sell, unless we can get a place for really, really cheap, we're gonna have to sell our unit for basically market rate. And so now the unit that was reserved or was affordable is no longer gonna be affordable. And so I understand that that's the only way that seemingly we can go and buy another place. But I will say that I would love to sell our unit to another family who could just afford it like in the affordable category, if that meant that we could also 
buy a place that's suitable for our growing family at an affordable rate. Unfortunately, the housing market just doesn't work that way. But I do think that it's important to ask ourselves, how long do we want these affordable units to be? Because I think it'll dictate our strategy and how we go about trying to address affordable housing here in Hawaii, which is why for me, I really believe that the best way to address affordable housing is through affordable rentals. And I know that there are problems and challenges with rentals versus fee simple or for sale units. You can't build equity and there may be issues about who's gonna maintain the units and things like that. But if we really want these units to remain affordable and just to provide housing for future generations, there has to be some kind of control and that can't really be dictated by the market. Like I mentioned in a previous video, I would love to see us build a lot of affordable rentals where the rent is cheap. Now, the units themselves won't be cheap, but the rent will be cheap. And by cheap, I mean when someone hears the rent prices, they go, wow, that's cheap. I remember I had this discussion with a colleague about whether everyone... Oh. Another ambulance. And I had this interesting discussion with a colleague of mine. We we're talking about affordable housing and home ownership in Hawaii. And they brought up the idea that maybe not everyone should have the right to own a home. Like if you don't earn a certain amount of money, maybe you just don't get to own a home and you just have to rent. And that's just how things are. And maybe that makes owning a home a privilege instead of a right. And of course that's different from the right to have housing, but the ownership versus rentals, I think that's an interesting discussion. Because maybe in Hawaii we need to start having that discussion where maybe home ownership isn't the goal for everyone. How do we make it so that maybe people don't want to own a home here but renting is really good enough or even an attractive option. And I think how you can do that is you start by making good quality rental units at very cheap prices. And by cheap, I'm talking about like $1,200 for a one bedroom. And the units themselves aren't gonna be like old and run down. They're gonna be nice, like the ones that you see in Kaka'ako or the ward area, but make the rents cheap so that people think to themselves, well, maybe I don't have to own. If I can pay this amount of rent and live in this wonderful place, maybe that's gonna be enough. Because I can tell you, if there was a two bedroom condo that was available for us and the rent was around $1,500 in town and the amenities were nice and the building was relatively new and it was safe, it would really make me think, maybe we don't need to own a home. Maybe we should just rent for the rest of our lives. and they would be totally fine. Now the whole point of this discussion is not to throw shade on anyone, not to point fingers or blame anyone. This is just the housing market that we currently have here in Hawaii. But I do think it's important to ask ourselves, not just can we build enough affordable housing, but do we want that affordable housing to remain affordable? Or do we just continue to build affordable housing for now, knowing that in five to 10 years or less, people could sell that housing and it's no longer affordable. And I know it's hard enough just to get these projects off the ground. You have to think about financing and environmental impact studies and construction design and hooking up to infrastructure. There's so many things to think about just to get the initial project going. But if we're not thinking about the long-term impact or legacy of these affordable housing units today, then tomorrow or in 20 to 50 years, that generation is gonna still have the same problems that unfortunately we're facing today, except at those prices, I don't know how that's gonna work. Because sure, we're adding more blocks for them on the Monopoly board, but by the time that it's their turn to play the game, they're not gonna be able to afford anything. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and aloha.